Hi, I'm Chris Martinson of peakprosperity.com and it's July 16th, 2014. I have an important update for you. Today, the United States just announced a new round of sanctions on Russia over the conflict in Ukraine. The thinking here is that the United States can apply additional pressure. Russia will back off, stop supplying whatever aid that the United States thinks it's supplying to the rebels or separatists in the east part of Ukraine. And uh, somehow this will all resolve itself. This is a big step up in the game. This is very important news because in the past, what the United States, mostly Europe following along somewhat had done, was put some targeted sanctions on. Uh, it seemed a little punitive at the time and, and maybe ineffective. Turns out it was ineffective. The prior sanctions were targeted at individuals, mostly people who were close to Putin personally, but not Putin himself. These new sanctions are what are called sectoral sanctions. These are targeting specific economic sectors of Russia. Now, trust me, if Russia did the same thing to the United States in reverse, Congress would be up in arms. They'd be rightly considering it a provocation, act of war, whatever we might call it. But this is now on the table. It's a done deal. Europe is thinking about also extending sanctions following along and seeing what they can do to uh, apply more pressure on Russia. Now, this is very interesting. The companies that are being targeted, one of them is Rosneft, which is the oil giant in Russia. It's a state-owned oil company. They need technology. They need access to capitals. They have partnerships going on with Western companies to develop certain uh, petro, uh, uh, petroleum assets, things like that. So that's all kind of on hold at this point in time. Trust me, the world really actually does need uh, additional output from uh, Russian oil and gas if they can get it. Interestingly, it looks like Russia topped out and has uh, certainly made a long top in its oil production. May have passed peak or, or a near-term peak, who knows, but they're definitely looking at and projections out of Russia most recently from their state-owned oil companies have talked about the fact that by 2016, they're going to be seeing a pretty good drop-off in overall production. So this is now just going to accelerate that process if that drop in production is already happening. Now, here's the main part of this story. Here's the part that really captures my attention. Obviously, friction between Russia, the United States, or maybe we'll say the West. Also, friction with China and the United States. There have been varying degrees of discussions of espionage and charges leveled. Uh, there's all kinds of things going on that are creating various pressures between the large state players. Now, here's where it gets really interesting for me. I just wrote a big two-part report on this idea that the grid, the electrical grid in Europe, in the United States, maybe in other countries, is more vulnerable than most people understand. Now, we've had a number of interesting reports recently where the grid has been said to be sensitive and, and we've seen some uh, uh, drills performed to understand what a crisis might look like if the grid were attacked. What do I mean by attacked? I mean, obviously, some natural disaster could happen, like a coronal mass ejection could happen, which we came very close to in 2012. Uh, that happening uh, didn't. We missed it just by a whisker, uh, uh, astronomically speaking. And uh, maybe something like uh, there could be uh, some sort of a direct attack of some kind, or there could be uh, just an accident, uh, you know, something that cascades through the system, takes it down. But the bigger threat seems to be this idea that people can hack into the grid. There are all these control systems, and there's a variety of components, and all of them are now hooked up, and they've hardened them as best they can. But uh, there was recently a report that came out that showed that hackers from somewhere, they think somewhere in Eastern Europe, had managed to gain administrative access to the most sensitive parts of both pipeline, pipeline companies operating gas and, and oil pipelines in the U.S. and the electrical grid. So this report talks about the idea that, listen, there are concerted efforts to get penetration into and control over uh, the electrical grid. And if that happens, unfortunately, you know, the early data seems to say that it's possible for somebody to do a lot of damage by working in just through electronic means. So uh, that's what the report is about. And, and it just, you know, comes to this one summary and conclusion for me is that um, everybody needs to be prepared for what might happen if we had a larger or sustained outage. No longer unthinkable because the United States is now poking a bear. And it is also having a lot of increasing uh, troubles with China. And uh, it doesn't look like there's good diplomacy or diplomatic uh, efforts underway in, on either front. They look rather clubbish and brutish. So listen, if these things get a little bit uh, uh, dicier going forward, now is the time to begin to really prepare for the idea that if or when we get into another 
war, I think that without even a single shot being fired, extraordinary damage can be inflicted on both sides of the table. I'm not saying that the United States is particularly vulnerable or, or as uh, any other country is. I think they're all vulnerable. I think the systems that we have in place are porous. It's easy to gain electronic access now to a variety of systems, and people can do an incredible amount of damage with a few uh, keystrokes. So that's the summary of, of the report. I'm really watching to these uh, geopolitical developments. These new sanctions against Russia, we'll have to wait and see how Putin responds, but this has upped the ante. So quiet summer, maybe not. Things look to be heating up. That's all I've got for you now, but we'll keep you abreast of things as we find out more. Thank you so much for listening. <music>